All right, here we've got the rock blocks. Got them in the mail yesterday, I think. And these are much stiffer than the rally armor. That's okay. We'll try them out. Uh, these are the tools that I'm using here. Um, the parts and pieces were actually separated front and rear, so these are the parts for the rear. And I haven't actually separated them out yet. And then as we move down, these are the parts for the front. And the mud flaps. Here's the parts and pieces laid out. We got some long screws, some short screws, some washers, some inserts, some spacers, some uh, some of these guys here, and then for the front, got kind of the same thing, but just kind of different sizes. Uh, the washers on this one are actually they seem to be metal, whereas the ones on Rally Armor are more of a plastic. Whether or not that makes a difference, I don't know. It probably has to do with the fact that these are a stiffer material, so they need something a little bit more substantial, um, which might make it look better. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hold on one sec. So we're in the wheel wheel. This would be the driver's front tire. I got the wheel turned out. These are the three... I guess clips that we need to remove and then install the backing clips and spacers and whatnot and then we can get it installed. I'll show you what it looks like here in a sec. As you can see these are a little bit more prominent on the car with the uh, logo. That's what it looks like. And it does curve to the car, which is cool. And then of course I'll need to clean them. But that's alright. Alright, let me get the back on. The way that I do these little clips is do it one side, middle. Try to go to the other side and wiggle. Go back. And it should pop. Maybe. No more good in. Hope that helps. Alright, there's the two clips here on the left side, and then where it's all wet is where the insert is. And that was a bit of a bugger to get in there. But we got it. Okay, so this back side is way, way tougher. Um, you just don't have as much room, and the screw's really long. Even though there's a spacer for this one back in here, it's just not a lot of room to work. Um, in the directions, it does say it's best to take the tire off. It can be done without it. I did lift up the back of the car with the jack. Let's see. There we go. So, there's that. Um, you just gotta keep fiddling with it. My solution is to use this guy here with my wrench. And that's, you just go slow. Get it done. Alright, I'll check back when I'm done. All right, so we got the mud flaps on, but I went to go drive it, and they are too long. They actually uh, rubbed just getting out of my driveway. Which I don't think it's too sharp of a, uh, you know, drop or whatever, but it just it scrubs, man. So.
I wish that the um, company would have put the I needed the shorter ones on this car that's kind of a bummer uh, but these do fit the Outback so I think I should be able to sell them uh, you know of course I'm gonna lose a little money but you know it is what it is you gotta try stuff sometimes and you don't always win um, so I went ahead and uh, ordered the uh, rally armor uh, that identical to the ones on the Outback to put on this one. They'll probably be the same length as these, but uh, you know they're not gonna. You know, since these are hard, they make a loud scratching noise, and uh, so the urethane at least they'll just scrub and it'll be fine. I like the length of this because I want all of the the debris and road kick up to you know stay down. But um, these are not the kit for this car anyway. So I did leave a review on their website. We'll see if it actually um, stays on there. And then uh, I have to take these off because uh, I really can't drive it. It's just too low. It's hitting everywhere. I don't know if it's the roads here in Washington or what. But especially like the little lip going from the road into like a driveway just a little bitty bump that does it so <clears throat> um and you know going up a little bit of course so that's what I'm gonna do tonight I'm gonna take these off I would have gotten a video on you know these driving but I just haven't been feeling that good during the day I've been doing most of this work in the middle of the night so <laughs> Sleep schedule is all wacky right now, but I am still getting stuff done. I just wish I felt a little better. But I uh, also, of note, I found a set of the 15 spoke uh, GT wheels, the 2010 to 2012. Um, for this car, they're 18s, these are 17s. Uh, debating on getting them, they do have some road rash, and the person wants way too much for them, in my opinion. Um, there's tires on them, but I would never trust. I would never put my wife in a car on somebody else's tires like that, unless there was like a receipt and they were brand new or something. Uh, it just And there was no TPMS sensors in them, so it's just all these little things are adding up. Uh, one day we'll find either the sport wheels for the 13 14 year maybe it was only the 14 or we'll get those limited wheels or I'll break down and buy some after aftermarket some new ones it just sucks cuz I'll these tires have a lot of life on them left and um you know they would basically be I wouldn't be driving on them so I guess that's the world I'm trying to get in here with the car upgrades and, and that kind of thing. <laughs> trying to be practical about it. Sometimes it's just not the way it goes. But yeah. I mean, even dirty, she looks pretty clean. So I'll, I'll get these, uh, these pulled off. If I notice anything that needs to be a videoed, you know, in terms of removing them, I'll let you know. I intend on pulling both rear tires off to pull these off. It's just easier to install. I would say installing mud flaps on an Outback is far easier than a Legacy, just because of the, you know, there's no real room in the wheel well. So, all right, y'all take it easy out there, okay? Can you see the difference? I still haven't addressed the bumper. 
I intend on doing that soon. Uh, one other thing that I did was I put glass sealant on um, on the windows, and man, they are super clean. I think it has to do with the new window cleaner that I'm using. Uh, let me go grab that, and I'll show you what I'm using now. All right, so here's what I got. This is the glass cleaner here. Um, I got the watery stuff not the era saw and um, I just didn't like it it's hard to use I don't know why maybe I used too much of it I'm not sure this seems to work so much better I, you know so you know, at least at this point highly recommend it I drove the car at night uh, earlier and uh, the windows were just crystal clear you know and you can really tell when they're all up streaks and whatnot, especially in the at night with a street light kind of thing. So I clean the windows first, of course, and then I use the glass sealant, which is Rain-X. Uh, basically, you know, comparable product, but it's the Griots, um, and I do like it. You know, it just takes time to put it on. Um, and then I take and use a wet rag to pull it off once it's hazed. You know, just kind of a very damp wet rag. And then I use two microfibers to follow that. You know, the first dry towel and then the really dry towel and to, to buff it off, essentially. And that's these towels here. These green ones, especially the dual weave, um, I like for windows. And then I also have been using the Black Shine Trim Restore for uh, the cow. Uh, I've done one coating on it. It says to use multiple coats to get it um, uh, basically smooth. So, and this foam came with that, this too. It's like a kit. <clears throat> but let me show you what we are doing with that. Alright, so the cow is this piece here. And you can see it's kind of uh, lighter gray in some areas and then kind of wetter. And that's because of that trim restore. Uh, it just needs to be smoothed out more on the next consecutive uh, coats. And then also I missed some spots and things like that. So if you look really closely up in there, you can see what it originally looked like. And then uh, what the coating looks like what it should look like. You know, some of it's a process of learning how to apply this stuff and um, I wouldn't say I did a very good job on this one, but hey, I went for it. All right, uh, that's all I got for right now. I'm gonna remove these mud flaps and um, I guess Maybe make another video with the new ones when they come in. All right, peace.
here's the uh, mud flaps and all the parts and pieces and the instructions, the sticker. I had these on my car for about two weeks. You know, drove maybe 100 miles. They do have a little bit of a scratch mark here on the very edge. You can see where they've rubbed, um, but they're still in really good condition. Um, I'm gonna be selling them for $80. Uh, they're normally 120 I think I paid like 140 with shipping and tax and all that fun stuff. Uh, so you'd be getting quite a deal. Uh, this fits a 2010 to 2014 Subaru Legacy, as well as a 2010 to 2014 Subaru Outback. Uh, I would recommend it going towards the Outback side, just simply because on my Legacy, it does scrub, um, you know, showing that evidence of it there but um yeah i hope that these work out for you i mean they're really cool the one difference between these and the rally armors is that these are stiff and you know, this is a stiff plastic whereas rally armor is like a urethane silicone you know it's supple so i did switch to those they're more expensive uh, but these uh, also look a little bit more aggressive on the car. They're a little bit larger, especially on the front, which, in my opinion, I think looked better. So, if you want them, let me know. Thanks.